Techless Structures Masonry Tools, Lesson 4, Practical Application with Manual Edits and Cuts. Topics in Lesson 4 include providing criteria to establish additional walls inside the model, how to go about making cuts and edits outside the masonry tools, and how to use caution before exploding components to continue manual edits, utilizing construction objects to assist in location of wall features, as well as cutting blocks to taper walls and modify openings. For the first portion of this lesson, we'll be creating a set of new walls on the second grid in our model. This will allow us to both practice the tools and concepts from the previous tutorials, as well as provide a fresh palette to try out some other basic masonry applications. First, in the 3D view, just right-click in the empty space and select Fit Work Area to Entire Model. We should see our previous walls on the grid to the left and the empty grid to the right. Next. Go up to the View ribbon and choose Work Area, then Using Two Points. Define the Work Area to only include the empty grid on the right, as shown. From here, we will now lay out new walls along grid lines A, E, 1, and 3. Keep in mind that we will not demonstrate this process in full, and it is up to the user to apply the practical knowledge from the previous lessons. The parameters for the walls are as follows. Please review and then pause the video to execute. Place the walls in a clockwise direction, starting at grid line intersection A and 3. Start by loading the save setting in the CMU wall tool we previously created. For example, we named ours TR underscore 8 inch underscore wall. Once you've loaded this, there's a couple of changes you'll need to make. First, ensure that when you place the walls that they fall centered on the grid lines. You can do so by going to the Position tab and changing On Plane to Middle. Secondly, ensure to turn the Tagging Blocks dropdown to Yes on the Wall Attributes tab. Also, we're going to change the Bond Beam class to 4, and will allow our walls to be visually distinct from the previous building, therefore reducing the likelihood of user error by accidentally editing the wrong wall. Lastly, we will change our bond beam rows to be 8, 16, and 24. For the walls along grid lines A and E, the overall total height should be 15 feet, 11 inches, and 5 eighths. The course orientation for these walls should have the full block on the first course, and there will be no seam locations for these two walls. Now the walls along grid lines 1 and 3, the height will be shorter at 10 feet, 7, and 5 eighths inch. The course orientation will have the half block on the first course, and we will be providing seams of 3 eighths of an inch along C line, just like we did previously. For all of these walls, we'll be using the following shapes for our blocks. Again, please pause the video and execute the walls so that they fit the configuration as shown on screen based off of the criteria previously given. Feel free to rewind and review as necessary to accomplish this task. Once completed, we'll move on to the next section. Before we get into manually editing our walls, let's kick things off by quickly touching on using construction objects. We'll be using construction objects throughout this lesson to help guide us in various tasks. Now, construction objects, as you may know, are lines and arcs and points that we can create inside the model, and they can help us locate insertion points for openings or other blocks or embeds or you name it. How users implement construction objects in their workflow is usually up to preference, but in this lesson, we're going to highlight a couple of the more common uses. So to begin, let's go ahead and open up our view list from the view ribbon and make the view elevation on grid A visible. Now once this view is open and we've maximized it, let's fit our work area to the entire model using the right-click menu and then redefine the work area using the command from the view ribbon and using two points to encompass the grid on the right hand side that contains the walls we've just created. Now for this example we're going to place a window with the wall opening tool and we're going to use construction lines to locate our desired insertion point. We can place construction lines on the edges of our wall and then use the copy linear tool to offset those lines to a location both vertically and horizontally and then the intersection of those lines will create our insertion point. So you can do this from the top or the bottom of the wall, the left or the right or the center. One tip is to place the construction lines along the actual edge of your blocks in case they're sitting on the center of the grid like ours are. 
If you were to place them along the grid line, you would find that you'd have trouble seeing your grid lines as they would be located in the middle of your wall. So just keep in mind where your plane is and where you'd like to place your construction lines. We'll go ahead and do that right now, rotating our view and then going to the edit ribbon and then construction object line and then placing a vertical line along the left edge and a horizontal line along the bottom of the wall. For this example, let's go ahead and keep things simple and we'll place our opening both four feet from the left edge of the wall as well as from the bottom. All we need to do is copy each of these construction lines four feet in their respective directions using the copy linear command. The intersection of our lines becomes our insertion point, and if it makes it easier, hit Shift 2 to go ahead and turn your blocks transparent so you can easily see that intersection. From here, we can just ensure that we're selecting intersections and insert our wall opening there. The process is pretty easy to execute, and you can repeat time and time again to insert all different types of features on your walls, slabs, and so on, whether it be openings, penetrations, embedments, or any other features. So with that example over, let's go ahead and delete this opening and proceed on to making some manual edits in this wall. Making edits to our walls that are outside the functionality of the masonry tools is actually pretty easy. And we can edit blocks manually using the functions found in the edit ribbon. And to do so, we just need to be making sure that we're selecting objects within components. Now, with that said, it's important to understand that when we manually edit objects inside of a component, that the component will always override any manual changes if you choose to make additional changes through the dialog box. So, if you're going to make manual edits and you want them to avoid being overwritten by the component in and of itself, you can explode the component. Now, exploding means that you ungroup the objects of an existing component. Once the objects are detached, you can modify, remove, and add those objects to suit your needs. It's very important to know that once you explode a component, that the component dialog will naturally not provide any control or modification to the now standalone objects. If you don't need to explode a component, such as your walls, for editing purposes, then it is recommended that you do not do so. To illustrate the point, we'll use our wall here as an example, and we'll delete a couple of blocks in this wall and change one of the bond beam shapes to, say, a regular block, and also its class to maybe 10. We're doing all of this by selecting object within components. So once we're done, we can switch back to selecting components down in our selection type toolbar, and we can double click on the wall to bring up the wall tool dialog, and it's already populated with the properties that were used to create the wall. If we do nothing else, but have the wall selected and hit the modify button, you'll see that our edits are going to be replaced. This is because the component applies those settings in the dialog box to the wall as a whole and overwrites any manual changes. So you can see that there are sometimes a case to go ahead and explode a component. Exploding a component is only recommended if you have no other option to achieve your results. It should be done with caution and should be thought through before proceeding. Make sure to finalize the wall's configuration and features before choosing to do so, including specifying your end conditions or block configurations, making sure your start and end points are where they need to be, and even adding openings for the wall opening tool. In the end, if you explode a wall and then you find later on that you need to do extensive edits that are going to cost a lot of time manually, it may save you some time just to delete those objects and redo the wall with the component to kick things off more quickly. Now that we have the warning out of the way, let's go ahead and actually make some edits to our walls using the standard editing tools. We'll begin with using the polygon cut tool to create a rectangular opening in our wall. We'll continue to use the elevation on grid A view, and we'll also be using selecting objects within components. With our view snap to plane by using control P, let's go to the edit ribbon and then select the polygon edit tool and proceed with the prompts at the bottom left. First, we need to select the objects to be cut, and we can select multiple objects, if you notice, by using a crossing window from left to right. Now, it's okay to select more blocks than you think will actually be cut, 
that is to say, blocks that may fall on the cutting line or even to the outside of it and would remain in the wall, blocks that don't interact with our cutting polygon are going to be ignored. So next we can go ahead and create the polygon. And I'll use a rectangular shape with an odd length on one side, uh, but you can define any shape that you prefer for this exercise. As you can see, you can just snap to any of the points on the existing blocks to cuts, midpoints, intersections, endpoints, anywhere in between. If you prefer, you could also take the time to lay out construction lines using the method we discussed earlier and lay out the extents of the four sides of your opening and then snap to that. Now, once you've completed your shape and the blocks that cross the polygon boundary or fall within it will be cut or removed respectively. Now, we can also cut our blocks by using another part, and this often comes in handy if you're going to have to make some sort of curved or round hole. So to begin, let's go to the concrete ribbon and choose the beam tool. And in the properties pane, let's change the profile to a capital D 24. This is going to give us a beam with a circular diameter of 24. I'm just gonna pick the intersection of 16 foot and grid line one and go back two feet, snapping perpendicularly and clicking my second point, 24 inches. I'm going to adjust the position of my beam using the contextual toolbar to be centered on the points that I picked. And now we can begin to move our cutting part into place. So selecting the beam, I'm going to right click and then choose Move Special Linear. Now let's populate some values. Let's move this to the right, say 56 inches. We're going to want our cutting part to sit clearly on both sides of our wall, not flush with any one side. So we'll do minus 12 in the Y. And then let's move it downwards 67 inches and 5 eighths. Make sure to put that negative sign, otherwise it's going to move upwards on you. Now that we have our beam, or what we consider our cutting part in place, we can now go ahead to the edit ribbon and execute the part cut command. It's pretty straightforward. Select the command and then follow the prompts at the bottom left. We're going to want to select the parts to be cut and we can use a crossing window to ensure that we're selecting multiple parts at once. And then we need to select the part to cut, which is going to be our yellow beam here. Notice that we managed to select all of our blocks but not the reinforcement inside, so we'll need to repeat the process and cut that reinforcement. We can turn our beam to be rendered or control 4, select it and then delete, and then we can redraw the view to get rid of the cut lines. If your cut lines don't completely disappear, you may have cuts visible, and you can go up to the contextual toolbar using the eye drop down and turn off cuts. We can also cut blocks in our walls using the line cut tool, and we can do this to a single or multiple blocks. It's actually very handy when you've got to trim up an edge of a block or quickly turn a full block into a half block. And it's also great for creating sloped cuts in our walls. The line tool is pretty simple. Just select it from the edit ribbon and choose the objects to be cut. And then we can define the cutting line. Once you do define the line, just select which size you would like to be removed and you're done. Now, with the line tool, we can also select multiple blocks at once. To demonstrate this, let's go ahead and provide some slopes at the top of this wall. Uh, we'll provide a peak at the center at two line. But before we cut, let's quickly lay out some construction lines to guide us and to verify our cutting line is where it needs to be before we actually make our cuts. We'll place the first line at the top of the full block at the end on grid line 1, which is the 17th course, as it is above the second bomb beam. The end point we'll place on grid line 2, but we want to keep it even with the top of blocks of the top course. So to snap to the correct point, I can hold down Control and click the top right corner of the block to the left hand side and then release the control key and click perpendicularly to grid line 2. As you can see the endpoint is now aligned with the top course but centered on grid line 2. Now we just need to repeat this on the other side of the wall and once we do we will have guides to provide us with our peak. Once our construction lines are in place we can proceed to cut. The quick and easy way to do this is to start the line cut tool, select the objects on one half of the wall and then trace our construction line. Then we just need to click anywhere on the top and to the left of our cutting line as shown on screen and all of our blocks will be cut or removed on that side of the slope. Then we just need to repeat for the other side. Now when making edits of the size there are a few things we can consider for best practices. 
we can cut a lot of blocks in this process that didn't actually really need to be cut and were just removed completely. If we want to utilize a best practice for efficient and clean modeling, we can choose to outright delete the blocks that we know will need to be removed and not cut. It takes a little longer, but it's going to reduce the amount of cuts in the model, and overall, the less cuts, the better for your model performance. The other thing to consider is the reinforcement. The reinforcement is added with rebar sets via the CMU wall tool, and when you cut the blocks, you will also cut the rebar if you select them. Now, this is probably desirable in most cases, but it's important to make note of in case some bars should not be cut or require further development past your cut. It doesn't make sense for our example on screen per se, but it may come up in the future, so be cognizant of what you're cutting. The last thing we'll need to cover in regards to manual cuts is adding blocks on the top of our slope. It may be necessary to provide bond beams or other block types on the top of our slope, which is fairly straightforward to do. Manually, you can place a new block or copy one from the wall. In this case, I'll copy this one perpendicularly above to sit on the end of the cut block above it. Next, we'll need to rotate this block so it sits on the correct slope. I'll use the Measure Angle tool from the Edit ribbon to pick my three points and get an angle measurement. First, I'll start at the vertice on the left-hand side and then move directly to the right on the end of the block, snapping perpendicularly. Then, we're going to go upwards and snap perpendicularly again, which is very important to get the true angle. And you'll notice that the guideline is not completely straight. It's on a slight angle back towards the left. This is what we want. Once the angle measurement is given to us after completing the three points, we can then use this value in the Move Rotate tool. All we need to do is select the block to rotate, and then right-click and hit Move Special, Rotate. We'll change the Around dropdown from Z to Line, and define our line by selecting the points on the bottom side edge of the block to be rotated, as shown. Next, we're going to need to provide the angle from our measurement in the Angle field of the dialog box. And notice that you're going to need to provide a negative value to rotate the block counterclockwise. Once we've done this, just select the block if it's not already, and then click the Move button in the dialog. And you'll notice it rotates upwards in a counterclockwise direction. All that's left is to move the block perpendicularly 3 eighths of an inch away from the rest below for our mortar joint. And then we can use the Copy Linear tool to array more blocks up the slope. It's a best practice to use the Pick function of the Copy Linear tool and click the left corner for our first point on the block and snap, but don't click, to the opposite corner. This gives us our vector, and then we can manually key in 16 inches and hit the Enter key, which will copy the blocks not only the 15 and 5 eighths, but the additional 3 eighths mortar joint on the right hand side of each block. Now, this works out well, but it's a bit more on the manual side. And just like placing walls regularly, we can actually remove some of the tediousness of this task by using the CMU wall tool itself instead of manually placing these blocks. It's actually not quite hard to do. We just need to specify that the wall to be only one course high, be a bond beam, and not to place any vertical reinforcement. So we can change the height to just 7 and 5 eighths inch and make sure that the full block is on the first course. Then we can go over to the Bond Beam tab and we can just set the Bond Definition to 1 and nothing else. And then lastly, we just change the Vertical Rebar dropdown from 2 bars to none. We apply these settings and then place the wall by picking our two points using the top of the cut blocks as our guide. The only thing left to do here is to use the Move command to nudge this course perpendicularly away from the cut blocks 3 eighths of an inch for our mortar joint. If you don't need to edit this top row any further, you can just leave it as is. Otherwise, consider with caution the next steps in editing. Before proceeding forward, go ahead and repeat adding a slope to the wall on line E so that it matches the wall on grid line A. This concludes Lesson 4, Practical Application, Manual Edits and Cuts. Proceed to the next lesson, Lesson 5, Practical Applications for Columns, Pilasters, and Curved Walls.